Okay, sir, understood. Okay, so let's move on. The next example is the dihedral group. And uh, the geometric or the physicist notation of that is dn. The, the abstract algebra notation or the mathematics notation of that is d2n. So there's a, oops, sorry. Okay, so the dihedral group say D of N is uh, the symmetry group. So I'm cheating and defining it as a symmetry group of something. The symmetry group of an n-sided regular, say polygon, you know, without directed sides. Okay, so what do I mean? So if I go back to my Pentagon, if, for example, you know, I didn't have these arrows, if I didn't have these arrows, uh, then the symmetry of this object would be greater, right? Do you, do you agree? If there were yes, no arrows sir. here? Yes, sir. Because then we discrete reflections. The arrows, stop us from doing reflection. So if I have arrows and if I make, if I do a reflection, say around uh, this axis, say, um, let me say around this axis in the middle, around the y-axis, imaginary axis, then, uh, you know, these arrows don't go to each other. The arrows flip with their orientation, right? Whereas, you know, this arrow gets very confused. It doesn't know what to do. Right, so so if I put the arrows, the symmetry of this object is reduced. So if there are no arrows, then the symmetry is increased. And uh, so it should be kind of obvious that you know C n is a subgroup of D n. Okay, because we still have those rotations. Now, to understand this, the structure of this group a little bit better, I'm going to appeal to geometry and I'm going to introduce the notion of a median. So what is a median? If N is even for a polygon, a regular polygon, you know, medians are lines that uh, go through you know, opposite verse vertices, say opposite vertices and bisect uh, there should be probably an Oxford comma here and bisect opposite sides or bisect opposite sides. So uh, if I draw, let me just do the easy drawing. Let's take a, a square. Sorry, it's not a very good square. So in the medians are, uh, this is a median. This is a median. Oops, sorry. This is a. This is a median. Uh, 
sorry, this is not a very good media. Let me just, yeah. So there will be eight mediums. No, there are four mediums. Oh, okay, I One, double counted. Two, three, four, yes. It's very common to do that. So don't feel bad about it. So the number median is equal to the N. Okay. Now if N is odd, then we have only one type of median. Okay, so if N is odd, then the median uh, is a line that medians are lines that bisect a side and go through the opposite vertex. Okay, so if I have, say, uh, a triangle, a, a, a equilateral triangle, then uh, you know, the medians would be just these. Are. Again, I'm not able to draw for some reason. Now the moment of truth. Yeah, yeah, it does do work. Okay, so there are three medians, right? So the idea is that if we have, if you're dealing with uh, say DN, so that we have an N-sided, you know, regular polygon, then it has N medians. So what do medians do? See that reflection around any of the median is a symmetry. Okay, this is something we didn't have for the directed sides because reflection screwed up the, uh, the symmetry, right? So reflections, so reflections, you know, around medians give us new symmetry operations. New in addition to the ones uh, in uh, CN, right? Okay. Would you please explain what you meant by a direct sum symmetry broken? Direct multiplication. Not direct multiplication, the directed sides. Similar, if I have directed sides. Oh, or the arrows. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Sir, uh, you, you wrote that the n cycle regular polygon has n medians, but won't that depend on n being even or odd? Like it's just a line. Uh, of no. Yeah, because if it's odd, I mean, look at the triangle. How many medians does it have? The way we have defined it, it has exactly three medians. Oh yeah, oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. So medians are essentially axis of symmetry of reflection. Okay, now it's not obvious, but the way to, you know, we can define DN in the following way. So DN consists of all the CNs. Here I'm going to borrow uh, very heavily from say Hugh Osborne. So it consists of all the elements of CN. So where R you know, goes from uh, one, you know, R goes from zero, one dot dot N minus one with, uh, you know, uh, a to the power n is e. So this is what I mean. Uh, you know, 
but it also consists of, um, you know, all the Bs, one B, one of the reflection around the medium. It doesn't matter which one, you can pick, but you just pick one, one of the Bs. And of course, reflection, uh, you know, around the B twice is going to give you E, right? Because if you reflect twice, you get the same thing. And it is not difficult to show that alpha times beta or B is, if you first reflect and then rotate, is the same thing as rotating N minus one times and then reflecting. Okay, and sorry, uh, and then all the Bs with the, all the ARs. Okay, so R goes from zero, one, dot, 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 N minus one. So, uh, sorry, this is not a very uh, neat, uh, uh, like looking definition, but let me just break it up. So we have C, CN as a subgroup of DN, right? So DN has in it C of N, but it also has one of the reflections B, as well as, you know, all the Bs and all the alphas times alphas. So one of the Bs and times alphas, uh, where, you know, R goes from zero, not zero, uh, R goes from one dot dot, N minus one. Okay. So this has order N and then this adds N more elements so that the order of D of N is two N. So there are two N elements. And uh, remember the order of CN was N. And the comment I wanted to make before take question is that, uh, you know, mathematicians or abstract algebra people, you know, call dn d2n. Okay, so there's a change. What we are calling dn, they call d2n. They're actually honest about the order of the group. Here, we are talking about the, because we are physicists, we are relying on the number of sides the polygon has, because we always need the crutch of having something very definite. Okay, so let's uh, take some comments, because I'm sure everybody's confused. Sorry about the rotational axis of a uh, square. Uh, did we consider only the same plane rotation? Because if the square is yes. on a 2D plane, the third uh, AZ axis would also make a rotation. Yeah, but that, you know, uh, yeah, then you can add as many, uh, as many uh, uh, dimension as you, as you want, right? So why, why just stop at three? But no, the definition just says that you're restricted to two-dimensional plane. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, sir, so um, the rotations in C N, like they're the, like they're two-dimensional rotations, but yes. the rotations in D N that are like that we have added later on, like they basically like require an extra dimension, right? To but they reflect. They're not rotation. You can think of it as a rotation. Okay. As a, oh, okay. So uh, we're saying like reflection is a different operation. Yeah, it's a oh. discrete operation. And then, like, um, if we just like added B, then we could have like created the other the reflections on, along other medians by like composing th that like reflection. Exactly. The... Yeah, and that's basically I'm going to do that very explicitly now with an example, okay? Okay. 
So uh, any other questions? Because I want to explain how just one medium can do the job with it and illustrate that with an example. You can also prove this, it's not very difficult, uh, but I have not prepared a proof. So, so let's do, and that's kind of the spirit of this class. I'm not gonna be bothered very much about proofs. Um, you know, it'll be, uh, but you know, there will be will prove some theorems such as isomorphism theorems. So let's take D4. Okay, so D4 is gonna be the, uh, dihedral group, which is the symmetry group of the square. And uh, let me draw the medians with blue. So we have a median here, median here. All right, that's good enough, yeah. All right, so uh, let me label the vertices. So this is vertex number one, two, three, four. So there is some sort of, you know, the idea is that each vertex, these vertices can exchange places. And if they do, it's, if there's an operation under which these vertices exchange places, then that's a symmetry operation. And let's call this median B and this one say B prime. Okay, so uh, C4, which is a subgroup of D4, consists of say rotations, which are two pi i n over four, where n is say zero, one, two, three. Well, it can be anything but these are the four unique uh, elements. So under rotation, you know, under, so this is, okay. And uh, so this, so if alpha is two pi i over four, so under alpha, you know, vertex one goes to two, two sorry, uh, you know, one goes to four, right, yeah. So uh, one goes to four, four goes to three, three goes to two, two goes to one. Okay. Now let's look at B. What does B do? So if I apply B, then uh, so basically reflection around the B axis, then uh, two, two goes to two, two doesn't change. And four goes to four, but one goes to three and three goes to one. Okay, so uh, let me copy this picture and uh, paste it over here. So the resulting, um, what happens is that, you know, the vertex number one comes here and three goes here. Okay. Right. So now if I look at it, see the ordering here was, you know, if I went say clockwise one, two, three, four. But now that we have made a reflection the order is one, four, three, two, okay? So the ordering has changed. So there is no way that, you know, so the or essentially, you know, uh, that's what happens when you reflect in a mirror, right? You cannot get from this picture to this picture by any rotation. Alpha is not going to take you However many times you apply it, it's not going to take you from here to here. Is that clear? 
Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I had a question like B prime should be like uh, the vertical axis now, right? In the second figure. Uh, no, I mean, I'm not changing the, you know, those are not part of the diagram. Those, not, those are not part of the, of the shape. Okay. Okay. So now if I say make a, uh, you know, if I make a um, rotation around, if I reflect around B prime, I just wanted to show that, you know, reflect why one axis is good enough. Because you might say, okay, if I want to get back to the same ordering as before, I would have to necessarily do a reflection around B. I'm going to say, no, just like, you know, what if I now do a reflection around B prime, then what will happen is that one will go to two and two will go to one and three will go to four and four will go to one. And uh, now if I draw this, so this was one, two, three. Uh, sorry, let me just uh, draw the picture before. So this was one went to two. So one is now here and two went to one. So this is here, this is four, and this is three, right? So we see that we are back to the same ordering as before, right? So this is basically my way of telling you that, uh, you know, you just have to pick one of the vertices to reflect around and you are going to get all the, uh, you know, and then if you apply alpha, so if you, for, if you multiply by B and then apply some alpha to the power R, you're going to, you're going to get all the other elements. So you're not going to get new elements by say, applying B prime and alpha to the power say R prime. Okay, so the one median is enough. That's all I wanted to say. I'm not sure if this is clear from the way I presented it. Another way of doing it would be if I started from the original picture and did the reflection around B prime, the ordering, the relative ordering of the points would be the same as the relative ordering we got from reflecting around B. And you can verify that. Okay. I'm actually a little so, confused. Uh, which two actions did we compose? Uh, reflection and rotation. I see. So yeah, let me just like make a, a statement. Like, uh, you know, uh, DN consists of all rotations you know, generated by alpha, that is, you know, any power of alpha and a reflection about one of the medians, say B, followed by rotations, okay? 